I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are finally going to be doing the Screamer Fox Spirit. We did the listener and the watcher and now it's the Screamer's time. Now I did go a little bit creepy with this one so if you don't like that kind of stuff I recommend not watching this if you easily get creeped out. I don't think I did that much creepiness to it but I did go creepier with it than the other two because of it being called the Screamer. Anyways let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna start on the clay head first. I'm gonna be making the top portion of the head first, and then we're gonna make a bottom jaw to fit this. Now, I'm not gonna be making a jointed jaw where it has a little hinge to connect it to, but I am gonna be making a mouth that opens really, really wide. And that's one reason we're not gonna be using a hinge is because I just can't get the mouth to open wide enough for my idea. So we're just gonna make it two separate pieces. Now obviously the screamer is going to be more on the creepier side than our other two fox spirits. The name just, it has to be creepy. I, I just can't figure out how to make a screaming something uh, not creepy. So because we're going creepy, I figured a nice green glowy eye would look really cool for this piece. So I picked some resin pieces that had a nice glow. They went really well with the colors as well. Since we're going to be doing more of a black fox, I figured green would kind of stand out. And any other color that I was thinking of using just didn't seem to fit the coloring that I had for the fur. So it is really weird sculpting a face without a bottom jaw. Um, it takes some getting used to. I think I've only done maybe one or two other pieces that I did similar to this. Um, and it, it just feels very weird not having that bottom jaw. So you gotta kind of imagine it there so that you can get the proportions right. So right now I'm just trying to get all the details laid out, figure out the shape of the head that I want, how the expression should look, and again, it's kind of difficult to make an expression when you only have half a face to work with. So I'm just kind of laying out where the upper lip is going to go, where we're going to have the nose, shaping the little indentions for the nostrils, and also where the teeth are going to go. Um, one thing that I figured would make this easier is to add the teeth after I have both the head and the bottom jaw made. That way I can make them align more easily and we can actually have the mouth kind of close. I don't expect for my first time doing this to have it close perfectly, so I just want it to be kind of close to closing. So I figured the easiest way to go about this would be to make majority of the teeth out of Instamorph. I did decide that the front teeth, the really tiny ones, would be easier to sculpt, so I am going to sculpt those, but everything else is going to be made out of Instamorph, which is a moldable plastic that's normally white, but it has a bit of a translucent look to it, so the teeth will look a little bit more realistic since I'm using this. So all I'm doing other than adding a texture to the roof of the mouth for the inside of the mouth is just laying out some holes where we're going to add the teeth later. So I want to make sure I get all of them. I don't think I added the exact number, mainly because I'm going to be extending the mouth in a weird way later, which you'll see once we start putting everything together. So once I'm done with the top portion of the head, I'm going to bake it for about 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. And then once it's done and cool to touch, I'm gonna use it to help me make the bottom jaw. That way I can make sure that they fit nicely together. Now for making the bottom jaw, structurally, I'm gonna be doing the exact same thing that I did with the head. I'm going to have a lump of tin foil glued to a container and we're gonna completely cover it in clay, smooth everything out and get the shape for our bottom jaw going. Now obviously our little piece of tin foil is going to be a lot thinner and we're probably gonna remove a lot of this clay so we don't have the head really, really bulky. 
Now I'm not going to add a ton of detail to the outer portion of the bottom jaw, but I do want to add a decent amount of detail on the inside. So I want to add all the little spots where we're going to have the teeth. I also want to add a tongue. And then how we're going to have the mouth open and close, I figured the easiest way to go about this was to have magnets. And so I'm just going to trace around that magnet, make an indention for it, and then later on we'll glue it into place. And then the other magnet will be glued onto the roof of the mouth, that way the mouth can stay closed. So I'm going to bake our bottom jaw for roughly about the same time that we baked our head for about 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. And then we have one more, well technically four more things we need to make out of clay. We need to make the feet. So I'm going to make the feet really simple. I'm going to be pretty much doing the same thing that I did with all the other fox spirits that we've done. I'm just going to start with a piece of wire and a ball of clay that I'm going to roll out into a cone. I'm going to stick the wire into the base of it. That way we have something to hold on to while we're sculpting the toes. And then for the toes, we're just going to add a little bit of clay to the front of the foot, blend it in, separate it, and just kind of shape the toes a little bit. And then the claws, we're also going to be making these out of Instamorph as well. So I'm just going to make some indents, kind of like what we did with the teeth. Lastly, I'm going to add some balls of clay to the bottom of the foot to lay out the paw pads. This is one of those things that's a bit optional, so you don't have to do this if you don't want to. I just like adding a little bit of extra detail to pretty much everything. And then once I have all four of the feet finished, those are going to go in the oven as well for probably the same time as everything else, about 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. And then once all of our clay pieces are out of the oven and have cooled to touch, we can start on the painting. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to start painting is going to be the inside portions of the mouth. So I'm going to lay out kind of a nice dark red color, and then for the rest of the clay piece, I'm going to completely cover it in black. So the black, I'll probably have to do one or two coats to get everything nice and covered, and then we can start adding some detail. Now I'm not going to add a ton of detail to the black portion of the face, mainly because we are going to be furring over this, but I will go over more around the snout and add a bit more coloring around that so it stands out a bit more. So I'm just going to add some hints of color here and there, some highlights, and just adjust things, clean up the lines a little bit. And then of course we also need to paint our front teeth, the only teeth that we made out of clay. And then once all of our paint for the face is dried, I'm then going to get my Instamorph out, start melting it down, and adding the teeth into those little holes that we have placed. The last little bit of painting that we have is for the feet, so I'm just going to paint them a solid black color, add a little bit of a highlight to the toes, and then paint the paw pads, that way they stand out as well. Like the face, I'm going to let the feet dry, and then we can start adding those Instamorph claws to the front of them. Now for the sewing, I'm going to be using pretty much the exact same pattern that I've used on all the other fox spirits. I think the only major change that I ended up making to the pattern was the front of the neck and the chest area. I've made a little bit separate. I'm going to have that felt instead of the fur. That way this can kind of be the inside of the mouth. So you can tell that I'm going to have the mouth open really wide if I'm having the felt go this low on the neck. Anyways, I'm going to get my felt and I'm going to sew it to our fur pieces for the sides of our body. I'm going to connect the neck to the side of the body as well. And then for the tail, we have a left and a right piece where the tip is going to be white. I'm going to sew all these pieces together too. And then the fabric for the legs, all of them are going to have an inside piece and an outside piece. And I'm just going to sandwich these two pieces of fabric together for each leg and sew down the front. And then after we have that little bit of sewing done, we can start assembling our art doll. So I have a wire frame that I put together ahead of time, and we're going to start adding everything to it. First thing that I'm going to add is going to be the fabric for the body and neck. I'm going to figure out where the wires for the legs are going to go, and I'm going to cut some really tiny holes for them and run them through the fabric body. And then I'm going to take the upper portion of our clay head and I'm going to glue this to the wire for the neck. So I'm going to connect that, let that dry, and then we're going to take the fabric for the neck and glue it around the base of our head. We won't be adding our bottom jaw until way later. 
After that, I'm gonna take the fabric for the tail. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna start stuffing and closing up the rest of the body. I'm gonna shave the sides of the body just a little bit so that the fur is a bit more shaped and it'll just make it a lot easier for us to connect the fabric for the legs. So I'm gonna take the fabric for the legs now and we're gonna start adding those in place. I'm gonna start with the front legs first and then I'll add the back legs. So I'm gonna sew my fabric in place and then I'm going to take our clay legs for the front and I'm gonna add them to the wire frame. So I'm going to figure out if I need to adjust the length of my wire for the legs and then I'm going to wrap the wires that are sticking out of the back of our clay legs to the wire frame with a thinner gauged wire. Then we can take our fabric for our legs and we can start gluing it around the bases of our clay feet. I'm then going to stuff and close up the backing of our legs. We can then shave them and then move on to adding the back legs, which are going to be added to the body in the exact same way as the front legs. They're just shaped a little bit differently, so they'll look a little bit different. Okay, so we have the body pretty much all put together and now we need to add our bottom jaw and finish up with the details. So I'm gonna take our clay bottom jaw and we're gonna start gluing some fabric to the base of it. So I have some fur fabric to go on the outside and I have some felt to go on the inside. So I'm gonna glue that in place and then I'm gonna start cutting and sewing and shaping it to fit the face. So once I have the majority of this in place, I can kind of figure out where the fabric is going to lay and make some adjustments to it. As you can see, I had to do a kind of more V cut on each side of the face to have the mouth open in the way that I want it to, which is going down the sides of the neck. Once I figure out how I need my fabric to be cut, I can then start sewing my felt and my fur fabric together. While I'm doing this, I'm going to be gluing some extra teeth going down both of the sides. So I'm gonna be kind of sewing about an inch, gluing a tooth in place, sewing, gluing, sewing, gluing, until I get all the way down the V shape that we have. Then we can take our bottom jaw and we can start sewing it to the front of the body. So I'm gonna lay it out, figure out where I need to connect it, and just sew it in place. After I have the jaw in place, I'm gonna start finishing off the details on the inside of the mouth. So I'm gonna take another piece of felt that's a bit brighter and I'm gonna glue that in place to make it look like the tongue is continuing down the throat. And then I'm just gonna use a little bit of my paint and some of my fabric markers to add some detail to this and clean everything up. Now to finish off the face, all I need to do is glue some ears in place and then we need to fur the rest of the face. So I'm gonna figure out where I want the ears to go, glue those in place, and then I'm gonna lay out my glue on my face and start adding, well, not my face, the fox's face. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so I'm just gonna lay out the glue on the fox's face and then I'm gonna sprinkle my fur trimmings in place, move it around and make sure it's in a position that looks nice and I'm gonna let that dry. I'm also going to be gluing some fur trimmings to the feet to finish them off a little bit. Now at this point, I could have called this piece pretty much done, but I decided I needed to just throw in a little bit more detail. I needed to do more to it. Now one thing that I decided that I needed to do was I needed to make the mouth look even larger for some reason. So instead of having it just what it is, Right now, I'm going to give the illusion that the entire body is one giant mouth. So I'm gonna extend the length of the mouth going down the sides of the body. So I'm gonna take some felt and I'm gonna sew this in place to make the gums. And then I'm going to be gluing my little teeth along the sides of the body going up and down. And I'm gonna even add a little bit to the end of the tail or the base of the tail. And to finish this up, I took a little bit of my 3D fabric paint and I just kind of went along the seams of it to clean up the lines. And then we need to work on the ears a little bit. And the main reason we're doing anything to the ears is because I kind of had a theme with the other foxes where we gave one element to it that was more and then we took away an element. So like with the watcher, we put a ribbon around his mouth and with the um, listener, we put a ribbon around his eye. Eyes. So with this, we need to do a ribbon around his ears, but I felt like the ribbon looked too pretty against all of the like creepiness of this piece. So I decided instead of using a ribbon to cover his ears, I'm going to take some needle and thread and we're going to be stitching his ears closed. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay guys, and here is our Screamer Fox Spirit. I had so much fun with this project. I love how his mouth came out. He's basically one giant mouth. Now the whole body doesn't open up into a mouth, like that would be really cool, but I did manage to get his bottom jaw to drop out quite a bit. So it's connected by a magnet and it works pretty well. I want to do more magnet things in the future because this one actually came out really good and I do have extra. But yeah, I would have done a poseable job, but I really wanted his mouth to just open all the way up. So eventually we are going to be doing a poseable jaw tutorial. I just haven't gotten around to it in this piece. Originally I was going to do that, but I changed my mind and I wanted the mouth to open more. Anyways, he is going to be in my Etsy shop, so check the links down below if you want to give him a home. He could be your little creepy companion. I also have links to a bunch of different art supplies that I like to use to make my art dolls. Now these are affiliated links, so if you do buy anything through them, it does help support the channel. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!